Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Take 5 with Pelican Corp. I'm Sam Hanziak, and here's Jason Manning. Hey, everyone. In today's episode, what we're discussing is an issue that is facing the damage prevention industry and is garnering a lot of uh, discussion and interest. Uh, most recently, and probably most notably within the CGA's Next Practices report that came out, uh, what was that, just a couple of months ago, Jason? Right. Yep. And in that report, the kind of the headline or the takeaway is that the damage prevention uh, process that we have in the United States, uh, it, people are beginning to wonder if it is uh, sufficient and sustainable. Um, and one of the reasons uh, that this is being brought up is this problem of volume and variability. And uh, in this episode, we're going to explore that. We're going to talk about what the volume and variability problem is, what are some of the causes of this problem or contributing factors. And then Jason's going to kind of take us through uh, what the solution or potential solutions could be to help solve this problem. Uh, so as always, we're going to start with uh, just kind of a couple of different slides to set up the discussion and go from there. All right. As usual, Sam's prepared uh, some slides because otherwise I would just have crayons and paper. <laughs> All right, so just to set the, uh, set the stage here a little bit, uh, this is uh, basically two paraphrasings of the findings within the Next Practices report. And I'm just gonna kind of quote this here. The volume and variability of tickets are a huge challenge for the locating industry. And then what CGA did in that report, they identified several areas uh, for investment by the industry uh, to help solve this problem. And, and the one that we want to focus in on today is this, uh, this insight or this finding that automation and technology is really the best and most effective method to help meet this challenge of volume and variability. So if we go to kind of the next slide here, let's talk about why we're experiencing this problem and what this problem is. So in a nutshell, the problem of volume and variability is essentially that as facility operators, what we're seeing on a yearly basis is a uptick in the number of locate requests that we receive. Uh, not only is this happening on a, on a yearly basis, but there's a variability issue here, basically meaning that that growth, it's, it's not flat across the year. Uh, there's wide swings month to month. And what this is doing is this is putting a lot of pressure downstream uh, within the process on uh, specifically the locators who are struggling to keep up. And uh, there's a limited amount of resources and individuals that they can throw at this problem in order to hopefully, uh, you know, deal with this volume and complete these tickets on time. Uh, the, the, the truth is, is that as they are underwater and falling behind, what we're seeing is a greater number of late tickets, uh, obviously fines associated with late tickets, uh, damages and injuries. Uh, so again, what are the contributing factors here? Um, there's probably a whole bunch of them, but I want to kind of point out four of them just to kind of give you a better idea of uh, what might be uh, helping this to occur. Uh, the first thing is, uh, you know, obviously build outs in new technologies. Uh, fiber and 5G come to mind. Uh, specifically, uh, if you're, you know, a smaller municipality or, you know, even a medium sized municipality, uh, you might have a, um, a internet service provider in your area decide to do fiber to the home or build out their infrastructure. Uh, that means that your tickets that uh, you're going to receive this year, whenever they start that project, is going to be dramatically higher uh, than it was the previous year. And that's something that's, uh, you know, out of your control there. It's uh, been a big one, uh, Sam. I just wanted to sorry interject, but you know, fiber has been a big one, and it's sort of been all over the country. But we've seen similar uh, sort of bumps, or or I guess you'd call it like a windfall of tickets coming from right. all kinds of projects. You know, uh, there's there's areas of the country that we're seeing uh, wind farm construction, or right. uh, you know, when new big uh, sort of pipeline projects or things like that get approved, any one of those can just generate a massive amount of tickets and they're really hard to predict. I mean, centers who, who deal with seasonal volumes, um, they get pretty good at predicting those, but it's almost impossible to predict uh, some of these big sort of one-off projects. They just pop out of nowhere. Yeah, good point, really good point. Yeah, this is absolutely not limited to just obviously telco technology. Um, so then the second thing here too is the peak adoption of 811. Uh, I think a lot of organizations, a lot of utilities, obviously um, the CGA uh, have really done a great job of a cre increasing awareness and adoption of the 8-1 process. Uh, they do that through outreach, they do that through um, advertising, and we're starting to see that. We're starting to see 
uh, more and more people understand their responsibility to call 811 and uh, actually go through and do that process. Uh, obviously, that results in a greater number of tickets. Uh, the next thing is aging infrastructure, and this is something that's you know specific to the United States, but I'm sure is also uh, occurring in Canada to a certain extent. Uh, Jason, maybe you can speak to that as well. Yep, yep, same same situation. Yeah, yeah. So we've got a lot of old infrastructure in the United States, and uh, we're reaching a point where that infrastructure is uh, you know needs to be addressed. It needs to be um, improved, and in some cases replaced. And we're seeing those projects uh, start to uh, cause a problem with in, in terms of volume uh, as they start submitting locate requests uh, for those projects. And then uh, finally here, another uh, contributing factor here is just demographics uh, shifts and uh, in terms of both population, you know, greater urbanization comes to mind. Uh, and then secondly, something that's probably not talked about as much, but uh, we also have, especially within municipalities and, and to a certain extent utilities, we have an older generation of really experienced employees that are starting to lead the workforce uh, for retirement. And we have a smaller uh, generation in terms of just basic demographics that are coming in to, to fill that uh, void, but not necessarily replace it. And they're also coming in with obviously just based off of uh, being a younger generation, less experience. And uh, that's a contributing problem as well. Indeed. So let's look at, uh, Jason, why don't you take us through what are some potential solutions using technology and automation to help kind of combat this problem and shave the peaks off of uh, this this uh, massive amount of tickets that we're starting to see? Yeah, absolutely, Sam. And there's a, these are just some of the solutions. Uh, you know, I, we don't want to uh, pretend that, you know, this is the, you know, the answer by any stretch. Uh, they're just a couple exactly. of strategies that, uh, that we think can are maybe underexploited or underused in, uh, in North America. Uh, the first one is, is really simple. It's automated uh, locate request screening. And to some extent, you know, screening has been a bit of a dirty word, but um, this really can be done. Uh, the technology exists uh, that this can be done safely and efficiently. And really what it does is it, it takes away uh, some of the less critical volume. Uh, it doesn't mean that you have to, every utility has to screen for every type of asset on every ticket, uh, but there certainly are scenarios and it depends on your one call and uh, or your notification center and what kind of information they deliver. There is certainly some level of screening uh, that can happen that just peels off some of that volume so it doesn't all end up uh, with a truck roll. Uh, and there's a lot of ways we can address that. We, we don't need to go into the details of it, but it's certainly an element that we can address. Um, the other one is, uh, is smart locate assignment and uh, routing, which again is a, I guess it's a work smarter, not harder sort of thing. Right. Uh, when these volumes come in, um, you know, the last thing you want to do is have to redo work or have to uh, have the expense and the time of rolling a truck out to a site for someone to take a crack at a locate and then not be able to do it and need to sort of resend it back to dispatch and have them send someone else out. Um, so by uh, being able to kind of send those tickets to uh, locators with the correct skill sets or uh, expertise is a, a really big factor. Uh, and it's something that will, uh, I think, help improve the efficiency of the, uh, of the process. Um, following that, we've got a critical asset and early warning um, sort of notification. This is about communication. So, you know, this one is is really uh, it's about getting an early communication out. And I think we've talked about this in, in some of our other uh, sessions, but right. uh, finding those critical assets, the, the, the hey, this is a huge risk. Don't dig and getting that communication out early. And, and I know that there's a risk of, of adding too much noise, uh, but this is actually one that we think is a great idea because uh, it lets the excavator know that, yep, you got the ticket you're on it. There's something there. There's definitely something there. Don't take a chance. Um, and it can reduce actually some of this follow up like, hey, I didn't get my locate yet. Where is it? Are you working on it? Did you get it? Do you even know I have a project? Right. Uh, it really cuts out some of that noise. Uh, and we talked before about uh, my love of comparing to other industries. Um, you know, when you have a uh, uh, package uh, notifications, delivery notifications for package tracking, that sort of thing, 
you know, it doesn't make the package get there any faster that you know that it's just gotten off a truck in Des Moines and it's being transferred to whatever. It doesn't make the package get there any faster. It just reassures you that it's on the way. It gets rid of that radio silence uh, and sort of allows you to kind of plan around it. So um, that's really a, a good thing as well. Uh, the last one is automated risk assessment. And uh, and this sort of, I guess, touches some of the previous points. Um, one of the issues with volume and variability, uh, we just spoke before about the the, the uh, hospital emergency room concept where, right. yeah, in an ideal world, if you broke your leg and you went to the emergency room, you'd be seen right away. Um, but they can't predict that very much like our industry. We can gear up, we can train people, we can have locators. There's just no way to predict every bump in volume. And when one happens, um, we, we want to make sure that we get to the tickets that have the highest risk and pose the greatest danger to uh, safety, right? Um, so in the same way that uh, the hospital can't predict and when you, you broke your leg, that's unfortunate. But if there was a 20 car pileup and there are critical cases, th they're going to get triaged and they need to be dealt with first because they, they want to save as many lives as they can. And our industry isn't all that different. When those bumps in volume come through, um, we want to make sure that we're getting locates done and people on site for the most uh, dangerous or the, the highest risk uh, tickets. Um, and if, if something has to wait, well, they have to wait. And that's not great. But, you know, we want to make sure we're doing sort of the greater good here. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously the goal is uh, and, and the law is to you know respond within that two day window. But we're not seeing that now. You know, we're seeing late tickets uh, creep up because of this problem. So having some way to help triage that is, is going to be important going uh, looking forward as this becomes a larger issue. Yeah, you know, that's a that is a great point. We're not uh, obviously not advocating that anyone use this as a way of sort of uh, skirting around uh, the the laws or not respecting the delays, uh, it, it is just sort of one of those things where when these happen, when the, we've identified it as an issue with the industry, and when they happen, um, you know, we need to be as safe as we can, and we just think that's a strategy that can be employed. So those are those are some of our ideas as to potential solutions. Uh, obviously, there could be a lot more. Um, as always, we'd love to hear from you. How are you as an organization, as a facility operator or a locate service provider uh, currently dealing with this problem of volume and variability? You know, how, what, what solutions are you employing? And uh, again, if you want to hear more of this content or if you have ideas that you'd like Jason and I to cover, please comment below and follow this channel uh, and we'll see you next time. We'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.